It feels like no one cares about the iPhone 8 and 8 Plus. Last week it was reported that Apple's latest iPhones are actually being outsold by their predecessors, the iPhone 7 and 7 Plus. I can't vouch for the veracity of that analysis, but it wouldn't really surprise me if it were true. People that buy iPhones in September are early adopters. Early adopters are likely to wait for the iPhone X. The iPhone 8 isn't a transformative upgrade over the 7, and the 7 now costs $100 less than it did before. Simple enough. But I'm someone who buys a new iPhone every year, for my sins, and while you'd think that would put me in the category of people who'd be holding out for the X, I actually bought an iPhone 8 Plus last month instead. This isn't because of price I'd spend the extra on the X if I were sure I'd like it better. The thing is, much as I do enjoy new, intriguing, shiny objects, I'm pretty sure I'll like the 8 Plus better as a phone in the end. Here's why. Display. This is the big one, quite literally. I've seen a lot of people assume the X will be an unambiguous slam dunk in this regard, saying the device has a bigger screen than the iPhone 8 Plus in a body close to the size of the regular iPhone 8. But this isn't really true, and I think a lot of people used to the plus-sized iPhones will be disappointed with the X in practice. Yes, the iPhone X has a 5.8-inch screen compared to the iPhone 8 Plus 5.5-inch display. It's also true that the X's is higher resolution. But the 8 Plus screen is actually bigger. The X uses a narrower aspect ratio, so while it's longer on the diagonal, you still get more surface area on the Plus overall and that's before you account for the notch and the rounded corners. I know, comparing screen sizes isn't what it used to be. But the bottom line is that the Plus will display more useful content at once, even with its lower resolution. It's wider as you hold it in portrait, which is why Apple introduced a new size class for app layouts when the iPhone 6 Plus first came out. Apps, websites, and so on have 414 horizontal points the unit of measurement that the screen is divided into for design purposes to fill on the Plus, while the X has 375, the same as the regular iPhone 8. The X has more vertical points, of course, because of the taller screen but a lot of that will be occupied by the notch and home button bar. What this means is that apps on the X will use the same basic layouts as the iPhone 8, not the Plus. You'll get more vertical content in portrait mode, but in landscape mode you'll actually see less vertical screen space than even the smaller 8 because of how developers need to avoid the virtual home button bar as well as the notch. You won't get the Plus iPad style multi-panel views, either. And how long will it take before all your apps get updated for the X in the first place? I'm still using several that never got updated for the iPhone 6. The X's screen may well be better quality we'll have to see how Apple's first attempt at an OLED phone turns out, but I have high hopes for the panel itself. Obviously, there's also no denying that the X makes far better use of available space. The iPhone 8 Plus chunky bezels are pretty anachronistic for a phone at this price in 2017. But I'm too used to the Plus layouts, and the accompanying information density, to go back to what's often going to feel like a smaller phone in actual use. Video is also a concern with the X. When watching regular 16,9 content, the notch and aspect ratio mean that you're either going to have a lot of wasted space, or things are going to look weird. Granted, the X will possibly be better for viewing wider cinematic content, in case you do feel like watching Lawrence of Arabia on the bus. This morning I caught up on the weekend's Premier League action on my 8 Plus, for example. I wouldn't really want to do that on anything smaller, but coupled with the much improved speakers it's a great experience on the Plus. As with TVs, it turns out that a big 1080p 16,9 rectangle is the best and most reliable way to show the majority of video content out there. Touch ID I expect Face ID to work very well on the X. I doubt Apple would launch it otherwise, considering the inevitable backlash that would follow the company doesn't want a repeat of the Apple Maps fiasco, where it removed a critical feature of the iPhone and replaced it with something much worse. But that doesn't mean I particularly want to use Face ID. There could be some technical issues to iron out at launch, 
and even if there aren't, it's just another thing to figure out and get used to without any immediate advantages. I'm not sure Animaji counts. Apple itself fell foul of this when it announced Face ID, as Craig Fiedrighi couldn't log into his demo unit on stage after the authentication had been reset. The system was working as intended, but that's kind of the point if it's able to trip up even Apple's tightly managed press events, it's going to take a minute for regular users to learn what to expect. Meanwhile, Touch ID works on the iPhone 8 Plus the same way it always has. It's fast, reliable, and you know what you're doing when you activate it. I'm happy to continue using it while iPhone X owners work through any Face ID kinks.